Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. Thanks a lot for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 7mm 08 Remington and the 270 Winchester cartridges. Now, both are fantastic centerfire rifle hunting cartridges that have really devoted fan bases, and for a good reason. That said, there are some important differences in their performance that get overlooked or lost in the shuffle. There's a lot of overlap in their performance, and they do work really well for a lot of the same things. But there are some interesting areas where there's some big divergence in their capabilities that makes them suited for distinct tasks. Now, interestingly, just despite their big differences in outward appearance, the two cartridges are almost shockingly similar in some areas. But like I said, there's some important differences to keep in mind, and each is better suited for different tasks. So that is what we're going to talk about in this episode. I'm going to investigate their similarities and differences in more detail and give you some recommendations on which one is best for various hunting situations so you can make an informed decision on which is best for your individual needs. Now, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Do it now. Just click that red subscribe button below and you'll get all my new videos. And if you really want to be high speed, click the bell to get the notifications. Additionally, and for more detailed information on other popular hunting cartridges, to include the 270 and the 7mm 08, as, as well as some other ones that you might not be aware of or might not be considering, Click the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. That's huntingguns101.com. Okay, let's get started talking about the 270 and the 7mm 08 Remington. As usual, we'll start with the history of the 270 Winchester and the 7mm 08 Remington. Now, the story of these two cartridges both really begins with the 30 6 now, the United States Army started looking for a new infantry service rifle and cartridge after receiving a deadly demonstration of the capabilities of the revolutionary new Mauser rifle and 7mm Mauser cartridge in the hands of Spanish troops in Cuba during 1898. They eventually selected the bolt-action 1903 Springfield rifle chambered in the new 30-06 Springfield cartridge. Now, the new 30-06 was dimensionally extremely similar to the 7x57mm Mauser, and it's highly likely that the designers of the 30-06 based their cartridge design heavily on the revolutionary 7mm Mauser cartridge. Some have even gone so far as to say that the 7mm Mauser is the parent to the less well-known 30-03 Springfield as well as the legendary 30-06. Anyway, initial loadings for that cartridge used smokeless powder to fire a 150 grain Spitzer bullet at about 2,700 feet per second. Now, believe it or not, that was a massive leap forward in performance compared to other popular American cartridge used during that era, like the 4570. So, not only was the 30 6 a big hit with the military, but it was an almost instant success in the civilian market as well. Now, as is often the case with any well designed centerfire rifle cartridge, Wildcatters quickly started modifying the 30 6 to accomplish a variety of different tasks. Some designers neck opted to neck down the 30 6 case to use smaller diameter bullets, like the 25 6 and the 280 Remington. And this is what the folks at Winchester did when they modified the case to use smaller diameter 0.277 caliber instead of 0.308 caliber bullets. The result was the 270 Winchester cartridge, which they released in 1925 with the new Winchester Model 54 rifle. The original 270 Winchester offering shot a 130 grain bullet at a velocity of 3,140 feet per second. That was an incredibly high velocity for the 1920s and was a tremendous speed improvement over the 30-06, which was itself considered a very high velocity cartridge at the time. Subsequent factory loadings for the cartridge have dropped the typical velocity with 130 grain bullets down to about 3,060 feet per second. And that's still pretty darn fast even today. Now, American hunters appreciated the flat shooting characteristics of the round and the fact that it was so effective on thin-skinned game. Now, it gradually became more and more popular, which was helped by Jack O'Connor and his famous affinity for the cartridge that he expressed in countless Outdoor Life articles over the year. Now, while he did indeed love the 270 and O'Connor used it extensively on hunts all over the world, 
is far from the only cartridge he used. And the 270 was also a good enough cartridge and filled a big enough niche that it probably would have been successful even without help from him. Now the 270 Winchester is a bit of an oddity when it comes to bullet diameter though. Unlike all the other popular 7mm cartridges like the 7mm Mauser, the 7mm Remington Magnum, the 280 Remington, and the 28 Nosler that use .284 caliber bullets, the 270 uses slightly smaller diameter .277 caliber bullets. It's unclear exactly why they decided to go with the 277 caliber instead of .284 caliber. One theory is they selected that particular bullet size based on the obscure 6.8 by 57 millimeter Chinese Mauser cartridge. It's also, po also possible that the folks at Winchester wanted to create a distinctly American bullet size and avoid the 6.5 millimeter and 7 millimeter bullets popular in Europe by building a brand new bullet diameter 10% smaller than the one used in the 30 6 and 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.308 is 0 0.277. Regardless of their exact reasons, the design team at Winchester went with the 277 caliber bullet diameter and the rest is history. Interestingly enough, while the 270 Winchester turned out to be a smashing commercial success for the company, 277 caliber bullets haven't really caught on themselves. The 270 Winchester Short Mag and the 270 Weatherby along with the newer 6.8 Remington SPC, 27 Nosler, and 6.8 Western are the only other mass-produced cartridges that utilize bullets of that diameter. Even so, the 270 remains an incredibly popular and effective big game hunting cartridge all over the world, but especially in North America. Now let's shift gears and talk about the 7mm 08 Remington. Now, first unveiled by Winchester all the way back in 1952, the new 308 Winchester cartridge quickly developed a reputation for accuracy, power, and efficiency with hunters and shooters. Just like what happened with the 30 6 wildcatters and gun designers started modifying the 308 to develop new and more specialized wildcat cartridges almost immediately after it hit the market. Among others, the 243 Winchester, the 260 Remington, 338 Federal, and the 358 Winchester are all descended from the legendary 308 Winchester as designers necked the case up or down to shoot smaller or larger 6mm, 6.5mm, 33 caliber, or 35 caliber bullets, respectively. Well, the 7mm 08 Remington is yet another cartridge de excuse me, derived from the 308 Winchester. Standardized by Remington in 1980, the 7mm 08 Remington uses a modified 308 Winchester case necked down to shoot 7mm bullets. And by necking down the 308 case to shoot smaller caliber bullets, the designers of the 7mm 08 built a cartridge with a higher velocity, flatter trajectory, more resistance to wind drift, and less recoil than the 308 Winchester. For instance, Remington offers a 7mm 08 load in their core lock line that shoots a 140 grain bullet at 2,860 feet per second. This load outperforms the core lock load for the 308 using 150 grain bullets across the board. Now the 7mm 08 Remington uses the same .284 caliber bullets as the 7mm Mauser and the 7mm Remington Magnum, basically any other typical 7mm cartridge uses the same bullets as the 7mm 08. Now this provides a great balance of adequate power for hunting a wide variety of game, moderate recoil, and great external ballistics at a reasonable distance. Now indeed, the 7mm 08 was one of the most popular cartridges among deer hunters, as well as for big game hunters in general who valued those characteristics for a very long time. Now, while newer cartridges like the 6.5 Creedmoor have eaten into that same market niche recently, the 7mm 08 Remington still remains popular to this day. All right, I referenced this earlier in the dramatic differences in their uh, outward appearance, and that is uh, even more obvious when you look at pictures of the cartridges side by side and compare their external dimensions and cartridge sizes, the measurements, that is. So first, the 7mm 08 is physically smaller than the 270. Both have the same diameter case with a 0.473 inch rim, but the 270 Winchester has a longer overall length and a longer case length than the 7mm 08. That said, the 7mm 08 will easily fit in a short action bolt action rifle, while the longer 270 requires the use of a larger standard or long action rifle. 
So for those reasons, the 270 has significantly more case capacity than the 7mm 08. Now, bullet size and weight are the other uh, big important differences between them. The 270 uses 0.277 caliber bullets, while the 7mm 08 uses slightly larger 0.284 caliber bullets. Uh, 270 factory loads typically shoot bullets in the 130 to 160 grain range, and 130 and 150 grain bullets are easily the most popular. On the other hand, the 7mm 08 uses bullets in the 120 to 160 grain range. 120, 140, 150 uh, grain bullets are the most common. At the same time, the 270 is also loaded to a higher SAMI maximum average pressure of 65,000 PSI versus just 61,000 PSI for the 7mm 08. Now, the differences in the external dimensions of these cartridges translate into some interesting differences in their ballistic performance, though. This is illustrated when you compare Hornady Precision Hunter, Swift High Grade, and Winchester Deer Season XP factory ammo. The 270 Winchester loads use 130 grain extreme point with a 0.450 BC, 145 grain ELDX with a 0.536 BC, and 150 grain A frame with a 0.444 BC. Now the 7mm08 Remington loads here use 140 grain extreme point with a 0.484 BC, 150 grain ELDX bullets with a 0.574 BC, and 160 grain A-frame bullets with a 0 0.450 BV. Now note that the various bullets used in the 7mm08 Remington loads I just talked about all have a higher BC than those used in the comparable 270 Winchester loads. Now all of those loads taken in the aggregate, the Winchester loads uh, use light for caliber deer hunting bullets. The Hornady loads use heavier for caliber and really aerodynamic bullets with a very high BC, and the Swift loads use the heaviest commonly available bullets uh, available for each cartridge. Now the 270 Winchester is a flatter shooting cartridge than the 7mm 08. This is due to the higher muzzle velocity of all those 270 loads compared to the various 7mm 08 loads here, and we're looking at about 170 to a 497 foot per second difference in favor of the 270, over the 7mm 08. That translates into a noticeably flatter trajectory for the 270, with the 7mm 08 having between 3 and 18 and a half inches more bullet drop at 500 yards. The differences are smaller at shorter range, but the 270 really starts to pull away around the 400 yard mark. At the same time, the 270 has a little more kinetic energy than the 7mm 08. Now the 270 starts out with between 6 and 27% more muzzle energy than the various 7mm 08 loads. Now just like with trajectory, the 270 has the advantage here because of the faster muzzle velocity of the cartridge. Velocity is squared when calculating kinetic energy, so small changes in velocity have a big effect in kinetic energy. Now in particular, that 160 grain loading for the, for the 7mm 08 really struggles on paper because it's so much slower than all the other loadings I compare here. Similar to the case with the 308 shooting 180 grain bullets, the 7mm 08 is operating right at the upper edge of its capability with those really heavy 160 grain bullets, and it simply can't push them very fast. While that's still a good loading for use on really big game like elk or moose at close range, the cartridge has subpar performance on paper, especially as range increases, and like I said, that's with this particular load. Now, moving on from that 160 grain load, the 7mm 08 cartridge uses a more aerodynamic bullet than comparable to 70 loads, so that edge and kinetic energy shrinks and even flips in favor of the 7mm 08 as range increases in certain cases. For instance, that 150 grain ELDX load for the 7mm 08 actually surpasses the 130 grain uh, XP from the 270 around 200 yards and the 150 grain A-frame from the 270 just shy of 400 yards. The 145 grain ELDX from the 270 still has a, about 8% more kinetic energy at 500 yards, but those cartridges are basically neck and neck for those two particular loads. Now, all of the loads in this comp comparison maintain at least 1,000 foot-pounds of energy out past 500 yards. The 140 grain and 150 grain 7mm 08 loads maintain at least 1,500 foot-pounds of kinetic energy out to 300 yards and past 400 for the 150 grain ELDX. 
However, that 160 grain loading dips below 1,500 foot-pounds of energy, just shy of 300 yards. Likewise, the 145 grain and 150 grain 270 Winchester loads still carry 1,500 foot-pounds of kinetic energy out past 400 yards. So the big takeaways so far are that the 270 Winchester has a flatter trajectory, but the 270 also has a small edge in terms of kinetic energy at shorter range and is surpassed by very high BC 7mm 08 loadings as range increases. Now let's talk about wind deflection. When you compare these same loads with a 10 mile an hour crosswind out to 500 yards, you see there's quite a bit of overlap, but the 270 also does seem to have a small edge overall. Now, while the 270 does have the edge in the trajectory department because it has a slightly faster muzzle velocity, this advantage is partially erased by the higher BC bullets used by the 7mm 08. Both velocity and BC are very important for calculating wind drift, or rather wind deflection, but BC is the more important of those two characteristics. Now, indeed, the 130 grain and 140 grain deer season XP loads for the two cartridges have pretty similar amounts of wind deflection, right? We got 18.4 inches at 500 yards for the 270 and 19.3 inches at 500 yards for the 7 millimeter 08. So, you know, less than an inch or rather about an inch at 500 yards is a very, very, very small difference here. Now, the same is true for the 145 grain and 150 grain precision hunter loads. We're looking at uh, about a half inch of difference uh, there. The gap is a little bit bigger with the two swift loads for the two cartridges. Now, in each case, the 270 does have the advantage. That said, that 150 grain ELDX load for the 7mm 08 outperforms all the other 270 loads except for the 145 grain ELDX once again, because that 270 load has a, has a high BC and because that 7mm 08 load has an even higher BC. It's just offset just a little bit because of that uh, faster muzzle velocity because the 270 is a standard action cartridge with a much larger powder capacity and can just push those bullets faster. Now, the limitations of the 7mm 08 when compared to many other 7mm cartridges like the 280 Remington, 280 Ackley Improved, 7mm Rim Mag, etc. In terms of an inability to either use a really high BC bullet like the 162 grain ELDX that you see with the 7mm rim mag for instance in the Hornady Precision Hunter line and or the inability of the cartridge to obtain a really high muzzle velocities especially with those heavier bullets hamstring the 7mm 08 here to a certain degree like I just mentioned. With all that said, the differences between the 7mm 08 and the 270 are definitely a lot smaller at shorter range. The 270 does still have less wind deflection at 100 to 300 yards, but it's not nearly as large as a contrast. Now let's talk about recoil. When you compare hand loads that approximate the performance of the Hornady factory loads I just mentioned firing the 145 grain and 150 grain ELDX bullets from the two cartridges from identical 7 pound rifles, you'll see that the 7mm 08 has about 20% less recoil than the 270. Now the 270 isn't a terrible recoiling cartridge, but that efficient little 7mm 08 just has significantly less. So the 7mm 08 definitely has an advantage in this respect, especially for smaller or recoil shy hunters. Now there's a couple of other factors that are also worth discussing. So first, the 7mm 08 uses slightly larger diameter bullets than the 270. Uh, specifically, the larger diameter .284 caliber bullets used by the cartridge have about 5% more frontal surface area than the .277 caliber bullets used by the .270. All other things being equal, a bigger bullet will make a bigger hole, cause more tissue damage, and result in more blood loss. This is a small advantage in favor of the 7mm 08, especially on bigger game. Now, in fact, those larger diameter bullets can somewhat offset the kinetic energy advantage the 270 has in some cases, or in enhance the advantage that the 7mm 08 has in other uh, specific comparisons. This can be helpful when hunting big game, and especially deer, or potentially even larger game. Now, the 7mm 08 also has a small edge in bullet sectional density. Sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. 
all other things being equal, a heavier bullet of a given caliber will be longer and therefore have a higher sectional density and penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. As an example, 130 grain, 140 grain, and 150 grain 277 caliber bullets have sectional densities of 0.242, 261, and 0.279 respectively. Compare that to 120, 140, 150, and 160 grain 0.284 caliber bullets, which have sectional densities of 0.213, 0.248, 0.266, and 0.283 respectively. This is something of a mixed bag on the face of things. The heaviest 7mm bullets outclass the heaviest 270 bullets, but the 270 has the edge with stuff in the 140 to 150 grain range. The differences are small across the board, but when comparing the most popular bullet weights for each cartridge, say a 140 grain bullet from the 7mm 08 and a 130 grain bullet from the 270, the 7mm 08 does have a tiny edge. And the same is true with the really heavy stuff, like that 160 grain 7mm bullet first the 150 grain 270 bullet. This leaves us in an interesting situation. The 270 Winchester is a more powerful cartridge in many respects, but the 7mm 08 really tends to punch above its weight. Neither are a really super heavy hitter on the level of cartridges like the 7mm Rim Mag, the 300 Wim Mag, the 28 Nosler, the 300 PRC, or even the 30-06, but both are really solid middleweight cartridges. All right, so where do we stand with each one so far? The 7mm 08 fires a larger diameter, often heavier, and usually more aerodynamic bullet at a slower velocity than the 270. The 270 usually has a flatter trajectory, but more recoil. The two cartridges have similar energy retention and wind deflection, but the 270 usually has a small edge over the 7mm 08 in both areas. All right, let's talk about rifle and ammo availability, starting with ammo. Both are extremely popular cartridges among hunters and shooters all over the world. Indeed, both, though certainly the 270, are also likely in the top 10 most, pop most popular centerfire rifle cartridges in the United States. While the 7mm 08 is fairly popular itself, the 270 Winchester is easily the most widely used of the two. The big ammo companies like Barnes, Browning, Federal Premium, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, Sierra, Swift, and Winchester all produce a really good variety of quality factory ammo suitable for hunting most species of big game for both the 270 and the 7mm 08. In each case, there's normally a pretty good selection of bullet types and weights for each cartridge suitable for big game hunting. Now, both are also offered in most of the really popular hunting ammo lines. Barnes Vortex, Federal Power Shock, Hornady Precision Hunter, Nosler Trophy Grade, Remington Core Lot, Winchester Super X, Winchester Deer Season XP, etc. There are some isolated cases where one cartridge is available in a certain ammo line, but the other isn't. This reflects both the performance characteristics and common uses of each cartridge. So for instance, the 270 Winchester is available in the Barnes Vortex Long Range line, while the 7mm 08 is not. Likewise, the 7mm 08 Remington is available in the Hornady Custom Light line, while the 270 is not. Now, while it is often easy to find ammo for both cartridges during normal times, ammo is usually a little easier to find and there will be a larger selection to choose from for the 270. In general, prices are similar, but the 270 Winchester ammo is usually a little less expensive. Now, during the 2020 to 2022 ammo shortage, the difference between the two cartridges has become even more apparent, and at least where I live and shop, 270 Winchester ammo is usually easier to find and usually more reasonably priced than ammo for the 7mm 08. Availability is usually decent online and the bigger retailers typically have a good selection of quality factory ammo for both cartridges as well, but the 270 will likely still be easier to find even online. So bottom line, the average hunter will probably have easier access to ammo for the 270 than for the 7mm 08, though I wouldn't say either one is really hard to find. Now, let's talk about rifles. Now, once again, the 270 is usually more common than the 7mm 08 when it comes to rifle selection, but there's usually a good selection of rifles in both cartridges. They're really common in bolt-action rifles, and in fact, just about every popular bolt-action hunting rifle in current production is available in both cartridges. Now, for instance, both the 270 and the 7mm 08 
are available in several different versions of the Remington Model 700 and Winchester Model 70. Same goes for the Browning X-Bolt, Christensen Arms Mesa, Kim Kimber Hunter, Mossberg Patriot, Ruger American, Ruger Hawkeye, Savage Axis, Tika T3, and the Winchester XPR. While both are most common in bolt-action rifles, they are available in a few lever-action and semi-automatic rifles as well. For instance, both are available from Browning in their Browning Automatic Rifle, or BAR, in the Browning Lever Action Rifle, or the BLR. Now, while it's not a very common offering, the 7mm 08 is also an option for those who prefer modern sporting rifles. In particular, while the cartridge is too long for use in an AR-15, it is available in larger frame AR-10 platforms from companies like Wilson Combat. So, you can probably find a good rifle available in either cartridge, regardless of the type of action you prefer. Now, additionally, barrel lengths do vary for both cartridges, depending on the manufacturer and exact model. The 270 is most common in rifles with 22-inch long barrels, but it's also not unusual to see that cartridge in rifles with longer 24-inch barrels. On the other hand, the 7mm 08 is also common with a 22-inch long barrel length, but the characteristics of the efficient 7mm 08 cartridge make it well suited for more, more compact rifles with shorter barrels. So 20, 18, and even 16 inch long barrels are not unheard of with that cartridge. And since it is a short action cartridge, 7mm 08 rifles also have a slightly shorter bolt throw and a shorter overall length. For instance, the Winchester Model 70 Super Grade is available in both 270 and 7mm 08. The 270 version has a 24 inch long barrel, a 44.75 inch uh, long overall length, and it weighs 8 pounds 4 ounces. The 7mm 08 version of that rifle has a 22 inch long barrel, is 42.25 inches long overall, so it's 2.5 inches shorter, and it weighs 7 pounds 12 ounces. As another example, Ruger manufactures their Ruger American Compact Rifle in 7mm 08, but only offers the 270 in their standard American rifle. That particular 7mm 08 rifle has an 18 inch long barrel and a 36.75 inch overall length compared to a 22 inch long barrel and a 42.5 inch overall length of the 270. Now, like I said, details vary depending on the exact manufacturer and rifle model in question. However, all things considered, rifles chambered in 270 tend to be slightly longer, heavier, and a little bit more unwieldy than rifles in 7mm 08. Having a shorter and lighter rifle is more important in some situations than others, so keep that in mind. Okay, so the $10,000 question, which one is right for you? Do you primarily hunt medium-sized game, white-tailed deer, feral hogs, or black bear at ranges inside 200 yards? Both are outstanding deer hunting cartridges and will work great on deer sized game with good shot placement. Indeed, a 7mm 08 shooting a 140 grain bullet and a 270 shooting a 130 grain bullet are both classic lows used by untold numbers at deer hunters over the years. Go with the 270 if you want something a little more versatile or if you just want cheaper and or easier to find ammo and rifles. If you're going to be hunting in the tight confines of a deer stand, uh, like a box blind, or if you're hunting in thicker brush, remember what I just talked about with the size difference in those rifles. That extra couple inches in overall length of a rifle can be a real headache to deal with when trying to quickly and quietly maneuver for a shot. So definitely consider the 7mm 08 if you prefer a more compact rifle. Now, are you looking for a cartridge better suited for long-range hunting for game like mule deer or pronghorn in open country where you might need to take a shot at longer range? The 270 has a flatter trajectory and a little bit more resistance to wind deflection, but the efficient 7mm 08 performs surprisingly well in this area, especially with a really good high BC bullet like that 150 grain Hornady ELDX. I would give the 270 the edge here overall, but there are definitely uh, special cases where the 7mm 08 can be a better choice. Now, do you want a hunting cartridge that's well suited for bigger game, like caribou, moose, elk, elan, kudu, etc.? Honestly, this is another area where it may be a wash between the cartridges. The details vary depending on the exact load, but for the most part, the 270 Winchester usually carries more kinetic energy downrange. 
However, the 7mm 08 uses larger diameter bullets and performs surprisingly well in this area too. Loaded with a quality 150 to 160 grain partition or A-frame, or 139 or 140 grain lead-free bullet like the Nosler E-tip or the uh, Hornady CX, the 7mm 08 is absolutely deadly on really big game at reasonable ranges. For instance, Randy Newberg cleanly killed a bull moose with a single shot from his 7mm 08 a couple years ago. Now, while not often counted among the real quote-unquote heavy hitters, the 270 can also be darn effective in this role when using heavy for caliber control expansion bullets like a 150 grain Nosler partition. After all, lots of hunters have killed untold numbers of those animals with the 270 over the years. If anything, the 270 is even more effective on really large game, like elk hunting in particular, now than it was even 20 years ago because hunters just have access to much better quality bullets these days. Now, are you sensitive to recoil and, indeed, of a lower recoiling cartridge? Neither is terrible in this respect, but the 7mm 08 does have a big advantage over the 270 Winchester here. And you combine that fact with the fact that the 7mm 08 is neck and neck with the 270 in certain categories with certain loadings, that may be the factor that kind of puts you over the top. You know, say you're hunting mule deer or pronghorn, you got that 150 grain ELDX in the 7mm 08. That little bit less recoil for the 7mm 08 may just make it a, a better cartridge for you or whoever you're, you're uh, getting a hunting rifle uh, set up for uh, to be the best choice there. So keep that in mind. Now, indeed, the 7mm 08 is an especially great choice as a centerfire rifle for a newer and or a recoil shy hunter. And it is very, quote unquote, shootable in a rifle that fits the hunter well, and especially if it has a good recoil pad, and especially if it has either a suppressor or a muzzle brake. Now, Hornady also offers that cartridge in their custom light line, which is a great reduced power option for deer hunting that will cleanly take a deer, but have even less recoil than the already mild recoiling, full-powered 7mm 08 loads that I've been talking about. Now, are you looking for a great cartridge for sheep, mountain goat, or tar hunting? where you need an effective cartridge with manageable recoil and a lightweight and easy-to-carry rifle. Both will certainly work to one degree or another. Thanks to Jack O'Connor, the 270 is considered a classic sheep hunting cartridge if there ever was one. I'd give the 270 the edge here since it has the flattest trajectory and the most resistance to wind drift, and also the most retained energy at extended range when using ideal bullets. However, the 7mm 08 isn't a bad choice here either because it's such an efficient cartridge that really punches above its weight. Like I keep saying, they're both solid rifle cartridges. While there is a lot of overlap in their performance and ideal uses, there are some significant differences between them in certain respects, and the 270 and the 7mm 08 are definitely better suited to specific situations. Carefully evaluate your needs as a hunter based on the circumstances you foresee using the cartridge in. Get a good hunting rifle chambered in the cartridge you select. Learn to shoot it well, use quality ammo, and it should serve you well afield. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click that red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos on cartridge comparisons, hunting gear reviews, etc. Now, for more detailed information on other popular hunting cartridges, to include the 7mm 08 and the 270, but with some other ones thrown in there as well, click that link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com, that's 101.com, to get a free ebook I've written on the best hunting calibers. Now I'm going to turn it over to you. Which one do you prefer, the 7mm 08 or the 270? What game have you successfully taken with each one? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.